So in the last episode, we looked at how we could fetch a user once they've logged in by sending their token in an API request to our backend and get the user's name. We then JSON decoded that name and created a user type that we stored that data into. And where we left last time, we were logging the user that we decoded, but we weren't actually putting it into our model and using it in any way. You might notice on the left, we've got a fancy new header. For the purposes of this video series, I'm using a CSS framework called Tailwind. Uh, it's a utility-first atomic CSS framework that just lets us really easily style things. And I've actually taken this header, by and large, from one of their component examples, the navigation one down here, just this responsive header. So you just give lots of classes that define all the different bits of behavior you want and put together elements that way. So our job today is to change this sign-in button dynamically. If you've logged in, we're going to say sign out, and maybe we'll even put your name over here as one of these links. Uh, and if you are not signed in, we'll show you a sign-in link, and we won't show you a link to your name. And this docs examples blog are just example links to fill in the space uh, for now. So I've done a small amount of work to, to get that new header in place. We're importing view. If I go to view here, it's a module I've created. I like to call a module view in Elm and just define all my different blocks of HTML in here. And I might split them out into smaller parts as we need them. But view currently has one function called header, which takes the model, doesn't actually do anything with it so far, and just dumps out all the, the HTML effectively required to, to render our header. You see, the only downside of something like Tailwind, uh, it's by design, is that you do end up with a lot of classes. Don't really worry about what they are. They just make it look like it needs to look on the page. We won't really be touching them too much. So I've imported our view module in main. And if we go down to the main view function, you can see the body is now uh, a list. And we call view.header passing in our model. So the first thing we need to do is actually add the user to our model. So right now, where we get the user, which is down in our update function, we're just logging it out. We're not doing anything with it. So first, let's go and update the model type. So we're going to say token is maybe a token, navigation key. And now we're going to have a user. And this user will be maybe a user. Now, this would be the way I would do this and implement the user for now. And we are going to do that. But there's definitely improvements we can make that we'll make in a future video. For example, this model now has a token and a user that are both maybes. But it would be weird. We can't have a user without a token, because that would mean that we have fetched a user using a token we don't have. So that's not really valid. Or we might be in a situation where we have a token and not a user. Now, that could be valid, because we could have the token and be making the HTTP request. But it might not be as well. So in the future, we're going to look at how we can use a better type system to avoid these impossible states. The video now will include a link to a talk by Richard Feldman called Making Impossible States Impossible, where he talks a lot about using data and Elm's types to model these in such a way that you cannot have impossible states. So just know for now, our app, the way we're modeling the token and the user is going to be improved. But again, I like to get something working and then improve it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with a more simple implementation. This is probably the implementation you'd be closer to using if you were newer to Elm. And then I'll talk a bit about why in a future video we'll refactor it and improve it. So now we have that maybe user in our model. We need to get our initial model set up correctly so it, we don't have a user. So let's go up to our init function here. So we go down here and we create the token here. You can see we grab the token if we have it. And when we have a token, we batch this call to API fetch user information. That means initially our user is going to be nothing. So we'll say nothing. I'm just going to get rid of this new model debug.log. I don't think we need that anymore. So let's go down now to our update. And in the case now that we've got a user, we can take this model and we'll say user equals just you. And let's get rid of that logging. And as you can see, I've missed a closing brace there, which is why the editor is complaining at me. Great, so we now have a user in our model and we can take care of this in the view to decide whether to show them a sign in or sign out link. So what we want to do is based on if our user is a nothing or just a user is show different text. So let's find the sign in button. It's actually this bit here and it's this anchor. Now, if we need them to sign in, we can link them to uh, slash auth, and that will take them through to the OAuth authentication flow that's handled on the server. If they're logged in, for now, the sign out link isn't going to do anything. In the next episode, we'll actually implement the sign out functionality. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take all, uh, let's take this anchor here. Let's pull it out of its parent, and we're going to paste it up here and create a new function called, uh, let's call it authentication link. And it's going to take a maybe user. It doesn't need the whole model. It just needs the user. So rather than have it take the whole model and only care about a bit of it, I'm going to have it just take the bit it cares about, which is the user. And it's going to turn HTML of type message. So authentication, it will take a maybe user. And we've got that there. Let me just save this. And down here in this div now, this is where the 
all that big block of HTML was that I've just copied. So we now need to call authentication link and give it model.user. So the first thing we want to do is change this text. So let's change this to be case maybe user of. And if it's just a user, then we know that the text needs to say sign out, sign out. If they're nothing, then we want the text to say sign in. Let's go and test that out in the browser. So we can see here it says sign out. The reason it says sign out is because I'm signed in because I've got a token in local storage. What I'm now going to do is go into application, find that token there, delete it and refresh. And you can see now we see the text sign in. So what I'm going to do now just to illustrate how navigation works and how Elm, because we're using browser.application where Elm controls the navigation and, and deals with it, I'm going to set the anchor link to always link the user to the login URL, the OAuth authentication URL. Just to demonstrate, in the next video, we'll look at how we deal with logging user out. So to log in, the login and the OAuth is actually implemented server side. So we're going to take the user to the URL of our server, which is localhost 3000. In a future video, we'll look at how we don't hard code it to this and actually set it when we run the application. And we'll go to slash auth. This will take the user to the server, which knows to redirect them through to GitHub, do the authentication, and then redirect them back to our front end. What I've also done is going to main.elm add to the on URL request function a debug.log of the URL request. This is going to get called every time Elm gets a URL request, which is a user clicking on a link. Elm is automatically listening for those events and telling us that they're happening. So let's have a look in the browser and see what happens. So I'm on the page, I click sign in. You can see we now get got URL request external HTTP localhost 3000 slash auth. This is Elm telling us we got a request, what do you want to do about it? If we take a look at the Elm package docs, you'll see that there's a function called push URL in browser navigation. So if we find push URL down here, uh, there it is. This changes the URL, but does not trigger a page load. That's good when you want to navigate internally. We don't want to trigger a full browser refresh. We just want to update our internal state and show the user the new page. There's also a function called load, which will leave the current page and load the given URL. This will always result in a page load. So we know that when our link is external, when Elm is telling us that we're getting a link to an external website, we don't want to do push URL and update the, the URL in place. We just want to do load to take the user through to that route. So in our case, when they go to the external authentication route, we're going to take them away from our website, let them go through that, and then they'll come back. The server will redirect them. So let's implement the sign in link. And in the next video, we'll look at how we sign a user out. So in our on URL request, we can say case URL request of. And a URL request type has two things. It's external to an external URL. And in this case, we need to return a message. And I'm going to say no up for now. We'll fill that in. Or it's an internal URL that has some data attached to it, it has a full URL structure. In this case, we'll do a no op there too. And we're getting an error on external and internal. We're going to need to import them, I think, from the URL request uh, module. So we'll go browser.navigation exposing key URL request uh, dot dot to pull out the two constructors. And we're getting here that browser navigation does not expose URL request. Let's go and have a look at the docs and figure out what I'm doing wrong. And we can see here that the URL request type is actually just in the browser package, not in the browser navigation package. So I'm importing it from the wrong place. So we can fix that by ditching that there. And it's going to be URL request. In fact, it's already up there. I just couldn't see. I'm going to put a dot dot in front of it. Doing the dot dot allows me to get at these constructors here. So in the case that it's external, we can create a new message called send user to external URL, and it's going to take the external URL. That's a message we don't have, so let's define it. So it's going to be send user to external URL, and it will take the string, which is the actual URL. And now we can go into an update, and let's deal with this event. So if we get a send user to external URL with the URL, uh, we're going to return the model as is. We're not going to do anything there. And the command will be uh, navigation dot load URL. And it's complaining that that doesn't exist. Uh, I think we're going to need to make this be browser.navigation. Typing browser.navigation every single time is going to get a bit dull. So we're going to go up to browser.navigation and we'll import it as navigation. And that way, rather than typing browser.navigation, I can just type navigation. Let's go and see the behavior now when I click on the sign in link. So I'm on the page, I click sign in. You can see the browser is loading now and it's going to take me through and although you don't see that me being taken to GitHub because it's remembered that I've logged in recently, you can see that now we've been redirected back to the slash sign in route with a new token. If I refresh now, we're going to be sign in and the stored token is set there. 
So in this video, we started to take the user state, put it in our model, and then use that to know if we're logged in or out and show UI accordingly. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can remodel our model such that we don't have these impossible states where we don't have a token, but we do have a user. These are states that, although you'll think they can't happen in practice, if you model your types in such a way that allows them, they inevitably probably will as your app grows and more people use it and you find edge cases. So if from the get-go we can model them such that you can never have these invalid states, you'll save yourself a lot of bugs.